Hi, my name is Eli Chamberlain and I am with Cozy Home. We're a partner of Red Feather and today I'm going to be talking about your weatherization kit and how to install it in your home and some helpful tips that will help you make sure that uh, that's most effective and uh, when, when you're installing it in your house. The first and most important thing in your whole kit is this carbon monoxide alarm. Carbon monoxide is an odorless gas that's produced by any appliance or wood stove that burns a fuel. So propane, uh, natural gas, wood, those all produce carbon monoxide. Water heaters, ovens, and even wood stoves um, can produce carbon monoxide. Hopefully that carbon monoxide is getting out of your house through like a flue or a vent fan. Um, but if it's not, or if you have something that goes wrong with your appliance or your wood stove and somehow it's leaking smoke or uh, just exhaust fumes into your home, um, this will detect that and it'll go off just like a smoke alarm will when it gets into high enough concentrations. Um, so even though carbon monoxide is an odorless gas, it can be deadly when, when it gets up into higher concentrations. So this is really important um, to make sure you have one of these in your homes. Um, it comes with batteries. It's really easy to install. There, uh, there's some screws uh, as well, and so this just screws onto your wall. There's a little mounting plate that's in the back of this that comes off that you can screw to the wall and then put the carbon monoxide detector on that. Um, and this one actually has a readout of a parts per million as well that will show you how much um, carbon monoxide is actually in the air at any, any given time. When it gets to a certain concentration, the alarm will go off. If that happens, you want to make sure that you open windows um, doors in your house, try to air your house out and um, figure out what appliance is setting that off. So if you have a wood stove going at the time, um, maybe let your, your wood stove um, um, stop running for um, a few minutes. Uh, and, or if you have like a, maybe your um, oven is going and you're cooking something, um, but you want to pinpoint what's causing that and then make sure you're not using that appliance until it gets serviced. This is a shower head that's a water saving shower head. So most standard shower heads that you might have in your home will use maybe uh, anywhere from two and a half to three and a half, four gallons per minute, depending on how old the shower head is. Um, these ones use quite a bit less than that. So on the front of your shower head, it usually says exactly how many gallons per minute the shower head uses. And if it doesn't say that, it's probably really old and is using a lot of water. Um, so this one says 1.25 gallons per minute in little letters on the front of this. Um, these shower heads are nice because they still have really good pressure and it's adjustable so it'll have like a, a stream spray and then a more concentrated like massaging spray as well. Um, so it doesn't feel like there's a lot less water coming out but there actually is. So this will not only help you save on your water but uh, it'll also help you save on your water heating costs. Um, water heating costs are pretty substantial in a home. Anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of your energy usage for your home goes into heating your water. So anytime you can cut down on your hot water cost and hot water usage uh, is a, a really good thing. So these are pretty straightforward to install. Um, you just need to unscrew your old water uh, shower head and in order to do that sometimes those are stuck on there pretty good and you might need to use um, like a pliers to grab around the neck of the shower head um, to, to get the old one off. And I do recommend grabbing the actual shower head to brace it when you're trying to take the old one off so you're not just um, leveraging um, just against that, that shower neck because that sometimes can break off and that's a big, a big deal if that breaks off. So uh, make sure you grab the neck of the shower head, um, take a wrench or a pliers to get this off. Once you get it off, you can just screw the new one on. Um, and it has a little rubber gasket in here, so that helps to make a tight seal so it doesn't leak around here. But if it does leak around there, you also have in your kit some Teflon tape um, that will help um, seal that up so that you don't have those, uh, those drips and stuff. Next up we have this uh, little thing here, it's called an aerator and it goes on your faucet. Uh, so this can be used on like a kitchen faucet or bathroom faucets. Sometimes on newer kitchen faucets they have their own built-in aerator that's a little bit more proprietary where, that, where these wouldn't fit. Um, but these fit on most uh, standard faucets. And so what the idea is with these is that they help cut down on your water usage by mixing air with the water. That's why they're called aerators. So it, uh, it just cuts down on, on how much water is used, but it still feels like there's a lot of water coming out and you're still able to wash your hands or wash your dishes, things like that. These ones are really cool because they're adjustable flow. So they have a little thing on here that as you twist it, 
um, it can change from anywhere from 1.5 gallons per minute down, all the way down to 0.5 gallons per minute. So if you're like brushing your teeth and you don't need a lot of pressure coming out of the water, uh, then you can use um, you know, maybe the 0.5 gallons per minute or if you are waiting for the water to heat up, you can use that as well. So um, it's a nice uh, way to adjust um, how much water is coming out. Um, they, ha they have little gaskets here that come with them. So to, to take the old one off, um, sometimes you might need to use a pliers again to do that. And um, you just wanna make sure that you're not forcing anything too much. Um, and once you get the old one off, you can just screw this one back on. These have really fine threads on them. And so you wanna make sure when you're putting the new one back on that those threads don't get cross-threaded in there. So just be real, real easy with it and then just slowly screw it on. And if it feels like it's starting to bind up, maybe um, back it out and try it again. This right here is um, some all-purpose indoor-outdoor uh, weatherization tape. Uh, this is primarily used to fix broken window panes. So if you have a window in your house that's either cracked or maybe there's a, a piece that's missing, um, you can use this to seal that up. It's pretty straightforward. It's just like a clear, like really heavy duty packing tape. Um, so the, the best thing to do is to, where you have that crack in your window, just to put it over that crack and you might need to use several pieces depending on if the crack's straight or bent or things like that. Um, but I recommend using it on both the inside and the outside of the window pane just to give it as much strength. Um, it's clear so you hopefully won't see, see it too much uh, and it can you know, last a long time until you um, can replace that broken window and get a better, you know, maybe a double pane window or a triple pane window. This is a, a piece of pipe insulation. So um, it has a little hollow core to it, but it's basically the same material that like pool noodles are made out of. And these have, some of these have uh, adhesive strips in them. So when you, after you insulate the pipe, you can pull this little plastic piece off and then it'll, it'll help stick together and seal those two sides together. Uh, where you wanna use this is, is right next to your water heater you usually have two pipes coming out of the top of your water here. You'll have a cold uh, water pipe and a hot water pipe. Um, it's not necessary to put this on the cold water pipe next to your water heater unless your water heater is located outside and there's like a freezing danger. Um, the idea of this is to help uh, insulate that pipe so you're not losing that heat to the outdoors or to inside your house um, when you have your, your water heater running. Um, a lot of times water heaters, um, they transmit heat up through the water heater pipes. And so this will help insulate that to make sure that you're not losing that excess heat. It'll also help uh, get water, hot water to your faucets faster uh, as well. Uh, if you do have pipes that are located maybe underneath your house or in an area that's exposed to the cold, um, you can put this on any pipes um, you know, that, that's in those unconditioned areas as well and that'll help prevent them from freezing. Uh, if your plumbing, you know, runs underneath a slab or, you know, maybe inside your house, those, those ones probably don't need to actually be insulated, only in ones that are in unconditioned, unheated spaces. One of the easiest ways to improve the energy efficiency and comfort of your homes is to seal up air leaks in houses. Most houses are much leakier than uh, they should be, and every house does need a little bit of natural ventilation in order to have good indoor air quality, um, but most houses are much leakier than that. And everybody's aware of certain areas in your home that you know, may have drafty areas, things like that. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about air sealing and where are some good places to do air sealing in your home. So this is a little diagram of a house. Um, a lot of people don't have basements, so you can just kind of ignore that. but. Uh, it's all kind of the same in terms of places that where air can leak in your home. So on this diagram, there's blue arrows and red arrows. The red arrows are spots where air will leak out of your home. So air leaks where what's called exfiltration, where air is leaking out of your home. And then the blue arrows is where like cold air will come in and that's called infiltration. The reason why air leaks occur in houses is because of pressure differences. Um, pressure differences can be caused by a number of different things. Uh, wind is a big one, so on a windy day your house is going to leak more air than on a, on a still day because of the pressure that's created um, against the walls and your roof and things like that. Another thing that causes pressure differences is what's called stack effect, and that's basically as warm air rises, um, it creates higher pressure towards the top of, bu of buildings and homes, and so that um, creates air leaks towards the top of your house. And then anytime air is leaking out of your house, air has to leak in your house. And so cold air will come in 
um, towards the bottom of your home. And so that's where we're more familiar with a lot of the air leaks is these ones um, closer to the bottom. So some real common ones are, you know, around doors and windows. Um, but some other places that you might not think about are anywhere where there's a hole in the drywall. So where you have uh, maybe duct work or heat registers in your ceiling, uh, lighting fixtures in your ceiling. Um, uh, wall outlets can be a big one, as well as spots where you might not think about where underneath walls, like where walls meet floors, that can be a spot where air can leak in. And so all of these spots can be addressed through different uh, materials, and we have some of those in your kit that'll help you seal up these areas. Um, but it is important to think about um, maybe some of these areas that you might not normally think about in terms of air leaks. One of the ways you can find air leaks is to, on a really windy day, to walk around um, with your hand or even with a piece of uh, incense, uh, something that makes a little bit of smoke, and see um, if, if, you, if there's air drafts um, coming in through different areas. And you can check along your, you know, where your walls meet your floors, or around windows or doors. Um, but most people know where these um, leaky spots are. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about some of these materials that you can use to seal up these air leaks. This right here is what's called a door sweep, and this is what seals your door to your floor or threshold in your home. And these ones are adjustable, so you can move them if for you know your your door shifts over time or a gap opens up or something like that. You can always take these off and um, put it back on, readjust them. Uh, but they're really easy to install. Um, one thing that you, you do need to do is cut them to the width of your door. So what I usually recommend people do is get a measuring tape, measure the width of your door, and then cut these down. Um, a hacksaw works the best for this if you don't have a different type of like um, power saw or a sawzall to cut it. Uh, but that, that's, that way you can cut it to length. Um, and then you just screw it to the bottom of your door and you want these little rubber um, flaps here to be touching the threshold, which is that little bump um, on the floor below your door. If your door doesn't have a threshold, uh, you'll, you can run this all the way down to the floor. Um, but what happens then is that as you open and close that door, this will be dragging on your floor, which can make your door kind of hard to open and close. It could also, you know, potentially scratch your floor if like sand or dirt gets underneath it. Uh, so ideally you have a threshold under there. You can also buy thresholds um, to put underneath your, your door as well um, that you can get at any hardware store. Uh, but you want this to be barely touching that threshold and making a tight seal when the door is closed and then hopefully not dragging on the floor as the door opens. Uh, this is put on with just uh, screws, um, so that comes, the kit comes with screws, and you just screw it right to your door, and then, like I said, you can move it up and down if you need to. <clears throat> These are called outlet gaskets, and they're just to seal up your, uh, your electrical outlets from air that can either come in down through the walls or maybe through the floor. Um, a surprising amount of air actually leaks in and out of your electric outlets in your home. And they make these in a, in a couple of different styles. So this one, and I'll just punch out the middle piece here. This is for a, uh, a light switch. Um, so it's really easy to install. All you have to do is take the screws out of the cover plate, which is a little plastic piece that um, you know, goes around your light switch. Uh, take the two screws out of it, put this behind it, and then put the two screws back in. You want to be careful once you have that cover plate out that you're not pushing the screwdriver back to where the wires are, but if you're careful, that's usually not a danger at all. If you want to be extra safe, you can always turn off the circuit breaker to whatever room you're working in, and that completely cuts the power to that room. Um, they also make them in this style, and I'll punch these out. And this is for just a regular um, electric outlet um, on your wall. Uh, same concept, this one has one screw instead of two screws. One thing I do recommend is that you use a hand screwdriver and not a power drill in order to put the cover plates back on because they're made of plastic and they're usually pretty brittle. So if you over tighten them, they will crack and then you have to go buy a new one. But these are really easy to install and can really help cut down on air leaks. This is called one part foam or spray foam. And these are used to help cut down on air leaks by sealing up uh, gaps where you have maybe a hole in your drywall or where a you know, pipe comes through the drywall or maybe there's a gap underneath your wall um, around uh, light fixtures, um, anywhere where there's a gap that lets outside air in and you need to seal that up um, permanently, this stuff works great. Um, I have two different kinds here. This is the, the big gap filler, so it works on larger gaps and this is for like a smaller gap filler. Um, these are expanding foam, so when you, when you apply them, 
they're going to expand to you know much greater than the volume at which you install them at. So you want to make sure you account for that expansion. Um, they also make a special one for windows and doors that you put around windows and doors that is lower expanding. If you put this stuff around windows or doors, sometimes uh, it can bend the frame of the door or window in and make it hard to operate the window. It can get bound up um, as you open and close that window or door. So you wanna make sure you have the right product and the, for the right application for it. Um, this stuff is kind of nasty. Once it gets on your hands, it'll actually stain your hands and it's really sticky and it's just, it's a, it's a mess to clean up. So um, I recommend using gloves when you're using this. And then I also recommend only using it in places that if it drips, you're okay with it dripping in that spot. So um, if you have a couch underneath this, when you're using it, move the couch away from the wall, maybe put down some drop cloths, things like that. Um, Cause this does drip sometimes when it expands. So you wanna make sure you're, you're very careful of what's around you. Uh, if it does get on something that you don't want, um, the best way to clean it up is to actually spray it with water. Uh, use a little spray bottle and spray it with water. This, the water helps accelerate the curing process for it. And then once it cures, you can come back and just peel this off of that surface instead of trying to wipe it up with a, like a, a paper towel or something as soon as it happens. Um, so it's, it'll make much less of a mess if you let it cure on whatever it, it, it dripped on and try to wipe it up right away. Um, if it gets on your hands, that's very hard to do. So you, you probably do want to wipe it off. And um, it does have instructions on, you know, what type of chemicals will help remove it from your hands. But I do recommend wearing gloves. Um, and then this comes with a little straw that hooks onto the top of the can. Um, you want to make sure you shake these um, really well for a minute or two before you start using them to make sure that the pro product uh, mixes well. Uh, they also make some water-based ones that are a little bit easier to clean up. So that's another option, too, um, if you want to maybe avoid a little bit more of a mess. Um, but these work great for sealing up uh, leaks in your home. This right here is called backer rod. And what it's used for is to seal up uh, gaps where you have maybe a spot that you wanted to use some caulking on. And you can stick this into the gap before you use the caulking and that will help uh, make the caulking have something to, to um, push up against so that it works more effectively. You can also use this without caulking if you need to just kind of seal up a random gap. Um, it's really squishy and it's uh, so it springs back pretty easily so you can push it into some pretty small gaps and then it'll, it'll expand and fill those gaps. Um, what I like about this is it's removable so instead of using like spray foam which you know you can't really remove um, this this can be removed after you know during the winter you're using it to seal the gap and then maybe you want to um, take it out after that, that's fine. Um, with this, it's real easy to pull out. Um, but uh, it comes in a big long roll and you can actually buy it in different diameters as well. So you have a smaller gap or a bigger gap, you can buy it in different diameters. Um, but the reason why it works really well with caulking is it, uh, is it gives the caulking something to push against. And if you have a gap more than a quarter of an inch wide, uh, you actually need to make sure you're using this instead of just using caulking because that caulking will fail if it's a if it's a big gap that um, doesn't have backer rod behind it. But this is a real versatile stuff and it's really cheap as well so you can use it for a lot of different purposes. Next we have a caulking gun and a tube of caulking. Um, this caulking is uh, made by DAP and it's called Alex Plus and it's a silicone uh, kind of enhanced product so it's, it's actually an acrylic latex um, caulking plus silicone so it has silicone in it but it's not 100% silicone a lot of the silicone products they may last a little bit longer but they aren't paintable so whatever whatever color that you of the caulking when you put it on that's kind of what you're stuck with you can never paint it whereas this stuff is paintable and still lasts a long time so that's why I like this product um, this comes in white um, this this particular um, caulking tube is white uh, other ones you can buy it in clear and brown and other colors as well uh, but I'm going to show you real quickly how to load a caulking gun so first off um, you want to push this button on the back of the caulking gun and slide um, the plunger back and then what we need to do is cut the tip of this tube off and there's a little cutter that's built into this caulking gun that you can use you can also use a knife to do that um, or you know a scissor sometimes works as well uh, but these kind of these spout cutters are pretty nice so you can just slide it in there and then really quickly just cut it off sometimes you need to give it a second go and then 
there you go. You have a cutoff and ideally you want to have a cutoff at a 45 degree angle and that helps you apply it nice and clean. And then once you do that, there's a little membrane inside the spout here that needs to be punctured. And that's what this little thing is for. And what you do is you just slide it down into the caulking tube and then load it into your gun and then squeeze it. And this caulking gun actually has an auto uh, release on it. So when you let go of the trigger, it pops back and it stops the caulking from coming out. Um, but some caulking guns don't have that and you actually need to push this button on the back every time after you release to keep it from coming out again. So, um, but caulking is a very versatile tool to you know, seal up any kind of uh, leaks you have or cracks you have in your home where air can leak in. And it's a really good tool for, for air sealing. Now I'm gonna do a quick demonstration on how to use um, a caulking gun. Um, so we already have it loaded in, we have the tip cut off and we have the, uh, the membrane um, punctured in here. And so now I'm gonna demonstrate what would be like an inside corner um, of your house. So like pretend that maybe this is your trim around a door or something or door or window and then maybe this is your drywall. A lot of times this is a very common spot for air to leak in as around that trim. So this, but this could be, you know, any part of your house where there's kind of like a corner. So um, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have a wet rag on hand and then just wipe off that surface so that there's no uh, dust on it. And then you want to start with the 45 degree cut of your, your caulking tube um, pointing up like that. And then so I'm going to just gently squeeze. And once it starts coming out, you want to just make a nice, try to make a smooth line. It's going to do that much for now. And then this doesn't look very nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back and go over it with our hand, uh, with our finger to kind of clean that up. It also helps make it adhere to the surface when you wipe your finger over it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just very, just do a little bit of a time. And as soon as I get about that much on my finger, I'll wipe that off and do a little bit more and then wipe that off. And just keep doing that over and over again. Uh, if, you, if you try to wipe too much or go too far with it, the caulking kind of squishes out the side and it makes it so it doesn't look very clean. Um, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. And then as you get better at this, you can like fine tune how much caulking you're applying so you don't have to wipe it as often. Um, and that way I keep my finger clean too. If I do it like this, um, when I'm wiping my finger off and that way when I'm all done my hand is pretty clean as well so um, let's do that and that makes a nice clean line there and then after your if you mess up with this caulking thankfully it's water based so you can just come back and wipe it off if it hasn't cured yet but that's a quick way to you know install caulking around an air gap <clears throat> This right here is a window insulating kit. And what these do is they create an extra air barrier in between your home and your window, which will help cut down on the amount of heat that escapes through your, uh, through your windows. Uh, windows are pretty big energy leaks in homes, especially if you have single pane windows. Uh, they can just leak a lot of air through them, but also um, just heat transfer through conduction as well. And so this basically will turn a single pane window into like a double pane window or a double pane window into a triple pane window. And what, what the way they work is they trap a little bit of air uh, in between the plastic and the glass of the window. And that helps um, create that insulating air, uh, insulating layer between the inside of the house and the outside of the house. Um, so these come in big sheets and they're in different sizes. So these ones are 42 inches wide by 62 inches tall. If you have a window that's bigger than that, you can buy bigger um, sheets of this uh, online as well as at hardware stores. And then after you apply it to the window, which you do using double-sided tape, uh, you'll want to use a hair dryer on it. And what that does is it kind of shrinks that plastic and makes it so that it's not all wrinkly and then it looks a lot nicer. You don't have to do that but it, it does work a little bit better and it definitely looks a lot nicer if you use the hair dryer to um, help, help kind of shrink that and get rid of those wrinkles. So this is our window insulating kit and I'm gonna demonstrate how to install it um, on a window. Uh, this is kind of a little sample window that we have here. It doesn't actually have glass in it, but for demonstration purposes, it works fine. 
so you always want to make sure you install these on the uh, inside of your house. You don't want to put them on the outside of your windows because uh, if any wind comes, it can just tear it right off your home and um, you'll never see it again. These kits come with this double-sided tape. There's nothing too special about this. It's kind of just like regular double-sided <coughs> scotch tape. <coughs> Once you get this started, actually, I'll have to cut this out. Sorry, it's kind of a mess. Assuming you can edit all that out. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Being the bloopers reel. Yeah, right. So, what you want to do is you want to put this on the frame of the window if possible. If you need to stick it to your drywall, um, you might want to test a spot to see if it is not going to uh, take the paint off because this is pretty sticky. So um, it's, it's good to do a test strip um, anywhere that you think that it might damage any paint. Um, but ideally, if you can stick it to the frame of the window, that's the best um, solution. And then we'll peel this off. And we'll just do that to all four sides. Once you have the double-sided tape on all around the window, um, you just want to make check and make sure that it's not falling off anywhere so it's nice and sticky all the way around. And then you take out your actual window film. And this one comes with three different uh, pieces of window film. So we'll separate those out. And then you want to make sure you leave a little bit of extra room around the window. Um, for a little bit of excess of the plastic window film. And that's just make sure that when you cut it down that you don't um, have it so that it's a little bit crooked and you run out of space. So I'm gonna leave like an inch or so around the window and then I'll just gently press it into that double-sided tape. And then what we wanna do is try to get it as straight as possible on here. this one on this side. And I'm trying to pull it pretty taut, but if there's a few wrinkles in it, it's okay. Push it on the bottom there. Then you can come back and cut off the excess of this with the scissors if you like. And then we have just a regular hair dryer here, and what we're going to use this for is to get rid of these wrinkles in here. And what it is is kind of like a shrink wrap material. So uh, as it heats up, the material just just shrinks, and it just uh, eliminates those wrinkles as it shrinks.
So now you can see after we ran the hair dryer over this, it's barely even visible on the window now. There's no wrinkles on there. Uh, once you cut off this excess part of here, you can hardly even tell that that plastic's there. And that plastic will help create that extra air barrier um, that separates your house from the outside elements, which will help insulate that window better. And uh, it's a, for a fraction of the price, you're basically turning a single pane window into a double pane window or a double pane window into a triple pane window. So really easy process.